Hey there, I'm Dave, also known as the Notion Coach, and this is a quick impromptu video on how to use Notion to quickly create a bookmarks page for your browser. This came up from a personal challenge where I was using different devices, different browsers. I have a personal Mac, I have a PC for work, and noticed that switching browsers, I was losing bookmarks and not really sure what I had already saved, what I had organized into folders. So I figured why not just create a bookmarks page in Notion so that as I'm capturing websites or specific links, I can do that in Notion once and have that update automatically across all my browsers. So we're gonna get into how to do that here and we're just looking at an example of what the end product might look like. Shout out if you've seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, you might get the reference for the cover image, but we're gonna start from scratch and I'm gonna go to my sidebar and I'm gonna add a new workspace here and we're gonna call this my bookmarks. And let's go ahead and make this full, full width and I'm going to create a table, or I'm sorry, a database. We'll say the database is inline, which basically just means that we're looking at the database without having to click into it one more time. And we'll call this bookmarks library. So we've got right now, the only properties that we have is the name of the website and tags we actually do wanna use here. So for example, if we've got categories like work or school, writing, maybe social, let's try to think of another one. Let's say, video, go with the, these five. I'm going to kind of get rid of these. So we've got these properties saved. And one other property we're gonna add, just in case we wanna sort later, we're going to add a property called last edited time. So this is, just say last edited. So this is basically if we're making updates or if we're importing it, we can sort by what's the most recent tag. So we've got this in a quick table view, but I want to turn this into a gallery view. So I'm gonna to go to layout and we'll, we're gonna select a gallery. Because we're treating these as bookmarks, I'm going to change the size to small and to give ourselves some more room so that we can use more of the page. Instead of displaying page content, we're just gonna say none. So we've got the page name. And then one last change is in the properties we do wanna see the tags. So if there's any tags associated, we don't have any bookmarks yet, but we're gonna get into that next. So we have those set up. So we've got this gallery view, we're gonna have the names and tags set up. So we've got the database set up, and now we're going to go into downloading and setting up a Chrome extension called Save to Notion. So we're gonna do that next. If you Google Chrome extensions and we go to that web, page here and we search for save to notion you'll see uh, it's the first one that comes up there is a notion web clipper which is the official notion plugin only difference and one of the big reasons why i prefer save to notion is there's a few more options to customize so if you've got particular templates for your database or you've you have different areas that you want to save into save to notion offers a lot more customization to set that up, which we're gonna do next. So once we download this, we're gonna to add to, yours might say add to Chrome or add to whatever your browser is called. Not sure if this is available for Firefox or Safari, but do know it's worked with Chrome or related browsers. So now you see this save to Notion icon. I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna pin it up here so that we can see that. And now we've got, we're gonna save this for the first time. Oh, okay, good. So let's go to, let's say I wanna save my Instagram profile here for quick reference. So I'm gonna to go to save to Notion and if we're setting this up for the first time, we wanna add a form. So when I click add a form, you wanna make sure that the workspace is the one that you want. In this case, this is my workspace called the Notion Coach. And then add to, we wanna add the name of the database, which is bookmarks library, which is what we just set up. And you'll notice here, once we added that database, we've got a few options. There are no templates set up for that database, but if you did have some setup, you could apply a particular template when you save this content. If you've got a 
particular emoji or cover image or any other additional properties that are set up for that template. But we'll just leave that blank for now. And then clipping page content, we're also gonna keep this off because we're using this as a bookmarks library. You probably don't need the content itself, but if you were, say, using Notion as a read later tool or as a kind of like research tool, you may wanna clip the content in that scenario. And then this just means that we're capturing the name and the URL. So I'm gonna save and go back. So now we've got bookmarks library as an option. So if I click on this, we're, we have the option of updating the name of the page rather than this lengthy name, we'll just call this Instagram. Click add new page. And we've got like that confirmation. So if I open this in Notion, actually we'll just go back to the original. We'll see that Instagram is here. One of the nice note is when we use Safe to Notion, we also bring in that image, that logo automatically. So we can get that visual cue of what each of these bookmarks is referencing. And once I click on this, we've got the URL, the date last edited. And then if I wanna assign social, maybe let's turn this to purple in the process. So I'm gonna say Instagram social and we've got our first bookmark. Now that we've got our bookmark, we do want to go back into the options and go to properties and turn on the URL. So let's say we wanna hide tags and just have the URL. What this allows us to do is as we, as we populate this with a full list of bookmarks from different places, clicking on the link will open a brand new page with that link so nice there now let's get into kind of customizing the space to personalize it with a few different things so first if you go up to the top you can change the font you're limited to three but let's say we want to make this mono and then if we want to change the name of this we can say welcome to the internet and if we want to add an icon we can also click on this upload an image if you use a png that's ideal if that way you don't have a background and you have just the graphics. So if we go to, let's go to desktop and look for this PNG file. That gives us an image here. I typically don't recommend adding a cover just because it takes up a lot of real estate. And if you're opening this and you're actually using it as a home page for your browser, you do want to make sure that you're prioritizing the actual links versus the layout of the page. From here, there's a couple more customizations that we'll get into next. Okay, so we're looking at a version of the page that's fully populated with a longer list of links. And as you can see, we've got just the name of the web page and the link itself. So clicking on any one of these will open the web page. But let's say we want to sort these in a few different ways. So first, if we, I'm going to unlock this page. I usually lock it just to avoid things moving around accidentally. But we'll go to properties and let's say we want to show the tag so we can see what type of bookmark is this? If you're using that tag functionality, you can see, all right, these are the design related websites, these are the social related. But if you wanted to organize one level further, if we instead, we're gonna turn these off and we're going to group by tag. And what this will do is auto sort each of these bookmarks by category. And if you go back into group, you can also rearrange where these show up. So for example, if we want work to show up first, followed by, let's say, writing, design, learning, and social. Let's say you wanna keep some of these hidden by default so that you only show work, for example. There's a lot of options that you can use with the tag so that if you're into just seeing the gallery view by itself or organizing it one level further, you have that option to customize in any way. So the last step we're gonna take is actually adding this page to your browser. So this is gonna look a little bit different based on what browser you're using. So in this case, using Brave, we're going to, we're on the Notion page, we're going to click on that bookmark icon, wherever that is in your browser, and we're going to just call this bookmarks and then click done. And what that's gonna do is if we open a new tab, we'll see that bookmark here. And then based on the browser that you're using, you might have like a home screen where you have frequently used sites or you can manually edit what shows up there. So we can also add it here as well. So I'm gonna grab this URL and click add site, call it bookmarks here too, and then paste the URL. 
So now that's showing up whenever we open a new tab. So you do have the option of it showing up in that bookmarks menu if you do have other bookmarks, but you have it when you open a new tab as well. And that way you can do the same process across multiple browsers, whether you're on a different device or on an iPad or tablet or phone and kind of have the consistency so that as you're updating this bookmarks page in Notion, the link is just automatically gonna update with the same information and the same views. Same thing goes for if you have multiple views or if you are playing around with the gallery view and organizing or sorting by tag or by category, doing it one place and then having it update automatically and not having to think about the folders and where bookmarks are. And if you update it in one place, but not in the other place, this just gives it more of a easier way to, to keep everything organized and make sure that you're, you have these in um, easy to access and in the same place. So that's just a quick overview on how to create a bookmarks page in Notion. Let me know what you think or if you create it on your own. Also, if you wanna check out the free template, I added that in the description below this video. So you can skip all those steps and jump right into using the template, getting it up and running. But let me know what you think or if you're taking a different approach. But otherwise, see you in the next video.